the best way that you could describe Oklahoma's 35-20 to 20 win over Iowa State? First half, it was the Oklahoma defense that stood out. And in the second half, it was the Oklahoma offense that stood out. Before we talk about the Oklahoma D, first of all, for the Oklahoma offense, their drives today didn't always result in points, especially if you watch the first half of that game in Ames as they moved it but struggled. It still, though, was a pretty productive day as far as OU being able to rack up a ton of yardage. How about 592 yards of total offense? That's right, 592 on the day. Landry Jones, it wasn't always pretty for him, but he was effective. And the one thing you have to commend Landry Jones for in this particular game was the fact that even though he threw a couple of first-half interceptions, he had the maturity, he had the strength to get through them and still play a pretty good ball game, especially in the second half. And I think that's the biggest difference between this edition of Landry Jones and the Landry Jones we've seen in previous seasons. Landry Jones in previous seasons, after interceptions, would have kept throwing interceptions. He wouldn't have gotten on track, in other words. But this senior, this Landry Jones, in that first half after those two Oskies he threw, came back with strength, and it's really showed in the numbers, and the Sooners were finally able to not only continue to move the ball, but this time they were able to finish drives with touchdowns. So you have to commend Landry for his terrific effort. And if you're looking at the running game, well, after being non-existent last week against Notre Dame, today, much better effort, especially in quarters three and four. It was Brennan Clay who got the bulk of the carries for Oklahoma. I think that was because Damian Williams, who had been the starter recently for OU, um, was injured last week against Notre Dame. We did see him play today, but he only touched the ball three times. Clay was the one that got a lot of the carries, and today ending up with well over 150 yards on the ground for Oklahoma, including a touchdown. And as far as the receiving core, well, today, one heck of a game for uh, Kenny Steeles. Uh, Steeles running... Uh, ran some terrific routes today, uh, made some good catches. Time or two, probably got away with a push-off, but still he was able to uh, really hurt Iowa State's secondary um, with some terrific catches, and he got involved in the scoring act, as did Justin Brown. Brown, by the way, ended up with a touchdown and over 100 yards in receiving. So the Sooners today had a 400-yard passer in Landry Jones, a 100-yard rusher in Brennan Clay, and a 100-yard receiver in Justin Brown. And don't forget about Kenny Stills. He was close to 100 yards um, in receiving. So a uh, terrific blue-collar effort today for uh, Oklahoma, a hard-earned victory. Um, in the first half of this ball game, if you missed it, in spite of the fact that the Sooners were dominating the um, yardage, it was at 1.7-6 to six after Iowa State hit a 51-yard field goal and just barely over a minute to go before half. And I don't know how you were feeling, especially if you're an Oklahoma fan, but at 7-6 to six Oklahoma, first thing that came to my head, is this game going to finish 14-13 to 13 or 14-16? to 16? Is Oklahoma in danger of losing once again, but this time at Iowa State in the first time um, era of uh, Bob Stoops? Could it happen? And then... A little more than a minute to go before halftime. The Sooners had a uh, lengthy drive, a drive that didn't take very much time off the clock, kept off with the uh, touchdown catch. A brilliant pass by Landry Jones to uh, Kenny Stills, make it 14-6. to And then the Sooners got the opening drive of the second half, marched it downfield. Brown catching that tip pass in the end zone, making it 21-6. So you can easily say that the Sooner offense, when it was 7-6, to finally got it in gear. They score the final touchdown of the first half, and they score on the um, opening drive of the second half, taking it from 7-6 to 21-6, just like that. Now, in terms of the Sooner defense, the first half when the, when the Sooner offense couldn't get in the end zone, the defense was at least able to hold Iowa State in check. For the game, by the way, Iowa State did not break the 100-yard rushing plateau. So a good job by the OU run defense. Steel Jans, the Iowa State quarterback who had five TDs the week before against Baylor. Well, he discovered today that he wasn't facing the Baylor defense. Wasn't the worst quarterback ever we've ever seen, but they held the Iowa State quarterback, did OU, to 50% as far as completion percentage. Terrific job there. 
First half, the OU defense was real good. Second half, I thought they were, you know, I thought they were just okay. They did give up a couple of uh, touchdown drives um, in the second half, but overall, I, I would say that they played that they played good. Tony Jefferson, um, he was everywhere on the field today, making hits. Uh, got an interception late, and for the Sooners, uh, a much needed victory for them. We knew that Iowa State wasn't going to be just a place where the Sooners could. Um, be able to name their score. We mentioned that in the weekly matchup show, but we thought that the Sooners would have the talent advantage, and we thought that uh, their offense could get back on track, and that's exactly what they did um, on Saturday. So for the Sooners, it's victory number six on the year, and let's go ahead before we wrap it up and grade the Sooners offensive, defense, special teams, and overall grade. Um, offense, I am going to go with a uh, B. Um, can't give them an A because the first half – um, they had several drives that did not end up in touchdowns in particular, that opening one in which they could not pick up two yards on third down inside the five-yard line with a belldozer, and they had to turn it over on downs. And then they had other struggles in the first half as well, but in the second half, um, that all changed as they looked a lot better, especially running the ball in the second half. It looked like they were starting to wear um, Iowa State down. So props to the OU offensive line. And also, especially to the uh, Oklahoma receivers, they were big today. So I am definitely going to go B for Oklahoma on offense. Uh, defense, I'm going to go with a uh, B as well. It wasn't always pretty for the Oklahoma defense, but in the first half, um, they prevented Iowa State from grabbing the lead when the offense um, just couldn't finish drives. So the defense, give them a B effort. And again, Tony Jefferson, um, he had a pretty nice effort. I know that, the, the, by the way, if you, if you listen to the commentators today, did you notice that they really talked a lot about the Sooner players on tackles leading with their helmet? Um, they really made that a pretty prevalent issue. But let me tell you something. The Sooners were just flat-out physical today, and they didn't always lead with their helmet when they were tackling. They were making clean tackles for the most part. There might have been some times in which the helmet was involved as far as leading with the tackle, but not all the time. It just seems like the announcers were, were wearing that out way too much, more than what we needed to hear. So I'm going to go B there. And then special teams-wise, I'm going to go B-plus for the Sooners. Um, the coverage teams were very good today, um, covering kicks. And Tress Way, I know he had the iffy punt on his last punt in the middle part of the fourth quarter. But early in the fourth quarter, he delivered what you would call one of those pitching iron-type punts in which it stuck inside the one-yard line. It was big because Iowa State had just held OU. The Cyclones went three and out. OU got the ball right back. And by the way, Trey had a punt in the first half that almost was down that the one just barely uh, missed and it was a touchback. But the special teams today, uh, good for the Sooners. Overall grade today, um, I'm going to go B. Um, it wasn't Oklahoma's finest hour, but it certainly was a lot better than what we saw uh, last week. And for the Sooners, they get a nice road win against an Iowa State team that, that's going to go bowling. They only need one more win to get to bowl eligibility. And speaking of Iowa State, uh, they'll play at Texas next week. Even if the Cyclones don't win at Texas, they'll still have a shot at getting that necessary sixth win to become bowl eligible. They still have Kansas on the schedule. So... Uh, Paul Rhodes, again, remember the name Paul Rhodes because in a few years um, he will be coaching at a different school. His services are going to be needed at a school needing a head coach, and Rhodes is definitely going to be getting a lot more money than what he's getting right now at Ames. But he definitely has made Iowa State football um, relevant. In terms of the Sooners, well, next week they're going to go against a better offense in Baylor. That's the bad news, but the good news is that Baylor's defense couldn't cover me or you one-on-one. -on -one. So the Sooners should be able to score a lot of points at home um, on November the 10th when they will play the Baylor Bears. Final score once again, the Oklahoma Sooners. It was a high yardage day, nearly 600 yards of total offense, and they win in Ames over Iowa State 35-20. Bob Stoops, once again, he's undefeated against the Cyclones. Boomer Sooner. And by the way, on Tuesday, don't forget to vote.